Your goal is to eventually outsource everything, okay? <laughs> What is up guys, Thaddeus here. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. In today's video, I wanna actually talk about why some people you know, hate dropshipping, so why some people you know, bash dropshipping, um, some of the methods used to you know, properly dropship and get sales and you know, all, all like this, this and that, right? Um, there's four kind of main takeaways that I got personally. Like I, I got inspired just because I saw some guy on Twitter post something bashing the dropshipping industry and then try and promote his own little um, whatever he's doing, right? But after kind of just looking over that, pondering, I came to realize that I know I, th I think there are four main reasons why either people don't get sales, like they don't they don't, they don't see success in dropshipping, um, why they don't like it, why you know other people that aren't dropshipping hate on dropshipping, um, stuff like that, and just the workarounds that are available um, for you, basically with all these stuff. Because like with a problem, guys, there's usually a solution, right? And the people that are dropshipping really really well. They usually don't hate dropshipping, right? The people that dropship really well, like they, they eventually move to other industries, but that's because they can use that money and funnel their stuff, right? Like I've said before, dropshipping is probably the easiest business to kind of start and get your foot into just because there's one very, very little capital that is needed to actually get involved, right? Um, and that, that's just the primary takeaway that allows people just to jump in and literally within you know a few hours, if they know what they're kind of doing, um, they can literally have their store live and have traffic running to their store and start you know making money online, right? So that's that guys, the very first thing that I wanna talk about, right? What, why people hate on dropshipping is one, there's, there's this stigma, right? That you know all products are cheap, and crappy and from China, right? Um, now, the, 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 the funny thing is like a lot of these big brands, big corporations, right? They, they, their suppliers are based in China, guys. I've done private label before. I go to China to find suppliers. You can find great quality suppliers in China. Now with drop shipping, most of the time, you're getting products from AliExpress that are already made. So you're not actually working with the supplier side of things where you're, oh, you're, you know, you're designing stuff, you're customizing stuff. Um, you know, on that whole front, but products that are already made available for wholesale purchase that you can upsell and market yourself, right? Now, when you first get started with dropshipping, most people get started selling cheaper products because it's just, you know, the psychology behind it is that, okay, a cheaper product is easier for someone to purchase, right? Or it takes less consideration, um, you know, and just marketing wise, like, okay, I can sell, you know, um, these, these two, like $2 bracelets for $15, that should be you know easy to sell rather than you know a hundred and twenty dollar product okay just because when people get started right they don't necessarily know what they're doing marketing wise or they haven't learned um, as much as they could know marketing wise to properly sell a hundred and twenty dollar product when really um, it's along the same sort of lines and takes about the same amount of effort but that's just what people usually do when they get started now I think the the one thing to the takeaway right is is just marketing and angling your brand properly. Okay, what I mean by that is, guys, I sold shades on AliExpress that I found for in between five and ten dollars for anywhere between forty and fifty dollars. Okay, that <laughs> that is those are really really good margins. Okay, now how did I do this? Why did this one custom content? Okay, I've always had custom content. Um, I stress that everywhere in my course, everything I always stress. Okay, order the products get custom content, okay? One, there's a workaround, okay? If you don't wanna wait that long to order products from AliExpress and you know wait two, four weeks, one, there's DHL, again, that's $40 for shipping, or you go to Amazon, find your product, order from Amazon, okay, you have Prime, and now you have your own custom content, all right? That you can get the product in two days and start getting your own content, okay? That's what I do if I, if I don't wanna wait that long, okay? Or if I don't wanna spend $40 on DHL shipping. Now, um, back to the whole stigma, you know, all products are cheap and crappy. Um, the thing with that is like it's, it's just how you present it, guys. So you can build relationships with your, with your suppliers to change the packaging, to change or add inserts into your like into products that you're selling and stuff like that. It's just it's a matter of actually being familiar with the industry, which a lot of people aren't, or at least they aren't when they first get started, which is why they want like immediately give up, don't see success, then quit, stuff like that, guys. So that that's the, the first one is that all products are cheap and crappy, which isn't necessarily the case, guys. You can find great quality suppliers. It's just a matter of sourcing, okay? Um, next one long shipping times all right so this one is is a known issue right especially if you're using overload to you know outsource from aliexpress um stuff like that shipping times generally are between like 12 and 20 days um if they're international or if someone's buying it from like a, a really foreign country um then it can sometimes get longer there, there's a bunch of different workarounds for that guy so one you can always just say you're 
um, you know, there, there's heavy order volume that they can expect, you know, the product to, to arrive within this time frame, right? You don't want to hide that information from your potential client or customer when you're dropshipping, right? You don't want them to order and then realize they have to wait that long and then they want their money back or something like that, right? You want to just make it clear, like, hey, we are, you know, experiencing heavy volume, right? Um, you can expect your order within 12 to 20 days after purchase, stuff like that, okay? Um, and then how do you actually go about fixing this, okay? So one, there's there's more and more suppliers on you know the, the AliExpress side of things, right? So let's, let's clear that up. So on the AliExpress side of things, there's suppliers that know that people you know selling and drop shipping, they, they hate the long shipping times. They've established places, you know, in, in the US, in the UK, in Europe, stuff like that, where they can, they, they have products there that ship out for faster shipping times, okay? So there's, there's people combating that exact problem right now and there's also other apps outside of Overlow, right or you can just literally find us dropshipping suppliers i literally have a list in the description you guys can grab which is a bunch of dropshippers you guys can sign up for and start selling that ship from the us or the uk right so it's, it's a lot quicker on shipping times right there's always workarounds there's always solutions to certain problems okay if you don't want to deal with you know these long shipping times or you just scared that the customers don't want to deal with it again you can tell them there's high order volume okay or just find products that ship a lot quicker Right? There's, there's, there's so many different workarounds, guys. So that, isn't, that's, that shouldn't be a reason that you don't start dropshipping, all right? Now, the next one, orders take forever to fulfill. When you guys are generally getting started, right, and you're sourcing products through, through AliExpress, you'll see that some suppliers, you know, they say average processing time, you know, three to seven days. That's a long time to, like, after you, after you submit an order for them to actually see it, like, package it, and then put it on, you know, on a ship or on a plane um, to your customer, right? So... That, that generally is a long time. The, the one easiest way to go around working this, guys, is build a relationship with your supplier. Okay, what I mean by that is start talking to them. Don't get their email. Get their WhatsApp. That's what most of the suppliers use in China. All right, and start building a relationship. Tell them, you know, I want this to be a win-win situation for both of us. I want to help you make money by selling your products. I want to sell your products to make myself money. All right, but I need you to, you know, get these processing times a lot quicker. Most of the time, guys, like, because most, most people don't reach out to them, don't try and build these relationships with them. They are more than happy to give you priority, okay? Now, I'm not saying do this before you even start selling something. They, they should see that you are selling some of their product, okay? Then they realize, okay, hey, this guy kind of knows what he's doing. Um, you know, we'll, we'll try and help him out so then he can get better, like, customer satisfaction, customer feedback, stuff like that to actually get more sales, okay, guys? So, that, that's a huge thing um, and just the easiest way to go out, you know, orders taking forever um, to fulfill in terms of the supplier side of things. Now, the, the, the same can be said for or, you know, orders taking forever to fulfill like yourself when you need to physically fulfill orders, guys. The easiest work out for that is hiring a virtual assistant, okay? You can literally go to Upwork or Freelancer. Um, there, there's so many different places that you can find virtual assistants that will do, you know, the, the dirty work, quote unquote. Um, for you, right? So all you have to do is train them, all right? Which usually takes on one to two weeks um, to actually just figure that, like, have them figure it out exactly, you know, what they need to do to fulfill these orders, okay? But again, guys, there's always solutions, and that that should be your goal is to eventually outsource everything, okay? Outsource your order fulfillment, outsource your marketing to like an agency or something like that, okay? Like I personally used a great agency that I love. Um, and that, that like they, they take all my marketing after I build up my stories, all right? So like, again, you need to figure out how to market yourself so you have like a track record, all right? And then once you have that figured out, guys, you can uh, like you can outsource to, to other agencies and tell them, okay, this is what I've been doing, just keep doing this, blah, 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 and they just take it off like for you. Right? That's how I have so many stores now. That's how I have six stores. I only have three more being made. Two are actually like for, for my course actually to like document for you guys. Um, and walk you guys through everything, which is a link in the description, by the way, always plug. But yeah, guys, so there's always a solution for that. Now, the last one, um, dropshippers use fake scarcity or fake urgency, okay? What they mean is that like, there's apps like Herify, um, there's FOMO apps, right? The little like pop-ups and stuff where um, you can basically manipulate where it looks like your store is getting traffic. Um, it looks like your store, you know, there's a lot of purchases, whatnot. And if you're just starting off, a lot of you guys need that kind of that leverage so that the actual people that you bring into your site see it convert, you know, purchase, purchase your product, right? Um, there's some people that don't like the fact that people use, you know, the fake scarcity, but guys, the, the, the only reason it's fake is because you haven't got to the point where, yet where you're actually consistently driving traffic. So there's literally nothing wrong with that, guys. Big corporations use it all the time. Um, there, there's, there's dirty tricks that really big companies use. Like, for example, like designer brands like Gucci, Louis Vuitton, those guys, to keep their prices really, really high, every, like, and at the end of each like season for fashion, right? The products that don't sell, most of these companies, they burn them. They, they literally burn their products so there's less of it, so there's more demand for it and keeps the price high, okay? 
So th that's something that they do to increase, the, like, to keep the price of their products high so people are purchasing their products, um, even secondhand, like, higher value, right? Then rather than, like, super, super cheap because there's just so many, like, left in stock, okay? So th there's all these weird tactics that, for one, like, if someone were outside the dropshipping industry, to be hating on is completely irrelevant, guys. And the fact that, um, you know, they're saying using fake scarcity, fake urgency, like, they, they, don't, they don't realize the whole e-commerce industry is all about psychology and marketing influence. Like, everything, like, nothing matters except the perception that a customer or client, like, gets when they visit your site, okay? That's the only thing that matters in e-commerce is when someone visits your site, what do they think of your brand? What are their initial thoughts in the first five seconds? Then can you convert them, okay? Like that's, that's really the key to it, guys, in terms of making money in e-commerce, all right? So that's just a really quick video that I wanted to make just about, you know, why people, uh, why some people hate on dropshipping, guys. I don't think, um, you know, I think dropshipping is a very, very lucrative industry, especially now, guys, just with the whole internet um, and everything, you know, kind of, kind of just relatively, relatively new, all right? And it's just the easy, it's the easiest industry to get into right now, guys. So that's why I advocate for it. So that is the video, guys. I hope you guys enjoy. Make sure to leave a like, leave a comment. I respond to everybody's comments. And don't forget to subscribe, guys. I will see you guys in the next video. Check the description for the course, for all the free, you know, offers, the Instagram influencer list if you're doing shout outs and whatnot. Um, there's a bunch of stuff, guys, down below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care and peace. Yeah.